Oh my god, we're here for round eight. We've made Oh it. my god. Oh my god, are we back? We've survived another week. I Welcome. can't believe we, we made it. What are we drinking today, Gabe? We are drinking beers from The Brewery. Yes, you heard that right. The Brewery. B-R-U-E-R-Y. Uh, perfect little brewery out in California, right next to Steven. It's basically his neighbor at this point. We've got some very different, interesting beers for this one um we've always been trying to find quote unquote weird stuff and we finally got it so steven yes gabe let's grab a drink R-U-E-R-Y. <laughs> yes, correct. It's, you know, right in front of you, but good job on the spelling. <laughs> um, today is important. You know why? Why is today important, Stephen? Today is important because this episode is dropping on February 20th, and you know what tomorrow is? <sighs> tomorrow is... <sighs> it's the 21st, which means it's my dad's birthday! Bang! <laughs> Exclamation point! Happy birthday, Steve! Happy birthday, Papa Hughes. How do you feel wow, about it, Mike Green? All of we already did it, yeah. <laughs> Everything we got. Uh, Damn, what, what does my dad get? His he, birthday's not until June, but... Well, we'll we'll see what we have in store for Chuck. We should have a Chuck's birthday soundbite specifically oh, prepared. Don't, you don't have to tell me twice. I will get it. Today is also a special episode because we are going to do a little bit of bragging right now. We were featured on Feedspot's blog post of the top 30 craft beer podcasts currently on the web. They rate, review, and listen to each new beer podcast. And out of 30, we were ranked number three. Yeah, it's fucking wild. Um, Thanks, guys. I don't know uh, really who put together this list or how they found us, but, um, you know, we're out there in a space with a lot of really great craft beer podcasts that have been doing it a long time. You know, yes. the beerists, uh, hobby craftsmen, uh, four brewers. Is that the one it's yeah. Four brewers doing it. Great. Hopped LA. There's a whole bunch of different great ones on this list. And for us to be included with them, um, when we just started this, this show and that people are kind of taken to it is dope. And we're super excited about it. So super thank huge. You, thank you for the spot. love. We appreciate it, and uh, we love you guys. Keep spreading the word. Follow, subscribe, tell your friends, rate, review. Remember Five stars. Us. Anything less is a bitch move. You heard it here first. Anything less than five stars, and it's proof that your grandma didn't love you enough. There we go. That's that's the motivation our listeners need. Let us dive in to what is happening around the beer world before we start with the brewery. Numero uno, uh, we're Even going to hit Thimble, us with it. Thimble Island in Bramford, Connecticut. Um, not huge Ooh. news, you know. Uh, in the world of beer news, um, the primary thing that you see is if you keep your your kind of thumb on the pulse of what's going on in the beer industry is beer releases. You know, this brewery released this beer today, uh, and we don't usually feature that stuff because it happens all the time. Um, but this is Thimble Island Brewing is local uh, to us but, uh, in Hamden. Um, where we're from, and so we wanted to give them a shout out. And they are announcing that their Island Hopper and their Sour Siren series, both of those series, are returning to the brewery for spring and summer 2020. Uh, the Island Hopper series uh, focuses on uh, varieties of hops, different variety, varieties of hops. They explore a new island from the Thimble Islands every month. Well, the Thimble Islands and I guess islands abroad. They explore a new island every month, both local and global. Um, and they're using different ingredients to produce kind of a wide variety of IPAs. And then there's the Sour Siren series. Say that ten times fast. Sour Siren series. Good. He got to one and a half. He got to half. Listen, I'm trying my best. <laughs> that consists of several different fruited sours, a range of fruit flavors, um, and they use real fresh fruit to give consumers the natural taste, their taste buds desire and favor um thimble island is a really cool brewery uh that started in 2010 they are like i said in Brantford. 
I took half a tour of Thimble Island once. Didn't finish it because some poor kid passed out and hit his head on a tank, and then the ambulance came, and then we all had to leave the brewery. I have 1,000 questions. It What? We were, we were all packed in on this tour, and then this guy was like, so we started in 2010. We've been expanding. We're like in this little, you know. Dunk! Like, what was that? Yes. Actually, Timmy! Though, oh, my God. And then everyone crowded around him. I mean, you know. I hope that kid's okay, but he he ruined my tour. Yeah, what a jerk. <laughs> what else we got, Gabe? Moving right along. <laughs> it's somebody's fifth year, fifth, wow, fifth year. It's somebody's fifth birthday, Steven. Oh my God, happy birthday. Is it a Happy toddler? birthday to them and all of their establishment. Weldworks Brewing Company, an award-winning brewery out of Colorado, because we can't talk about Colorado enough, celebrating their fifth year anniversary and what better way to celebrate than to host a kick-ass party that we are going to sneak into. By the way, I didn't get a chance to talk to you about this before we started recording. We're going to sneak into it. I have it all okay. arranged. I have We're the map. To- I have our luggage. Don't worry about it. We're going to Colorado. To celebrate, they're holding, they're, <laughs> they're holding the party on March 20th and 21st. Basically, just a big bash with a bunch of new and old favorite beers. They're coming out with four different barrel-aged stout releases, um, including the barrel-aged Mexican Acromatic, Starry Noche, Media Noche Premier Volume 2, and Media Noche's Brewers Select. Plus, even better, limited edition full-color wrap anniversary glassware, so you could go home with a little souvenir. It's going to be a lot of fun. They're going to have a lot of stuff. Um, I'm assuming they're going to have... I've been saying to every five-year-old I've met, you should throw your fifth birthday party at a brewery. They never listen to me. I, it's always listen, Ronald McDonald. How many five-year-olds do you know? I hang out with five-year-olds a lot. Okay. Well, <laughs> now now we're going to be on a different top 30 it's, list. But <laughs> you know what? I'm just saying what a great way to celebrate your fifth year. Congrats to them. Congrats for being five, guys. You deserve Congrats a two-day party for, in March. Congrats you didn't die. <laughs> My voice uh, just cracked. Did you hear that? I did hear that. Wow. Congrats on not being die. Someone didn't like warm up. Right now. Yeah, apparently. Uh, finally, in the news and notes, Trillium Brewing. Okay, first of all, Trillium great Brewing. Name. Great name. Great, great brewery. Name. Um Go follow them on social media. This is we don't they, we don't get anything out of out of saying this, but they have some great posts, some really sexy pictures. Their of cameramen and, and they, women are just superb, and they brew some pretty incredible stuff. But um, Trillium Brewing, yeah, but that's more secondary. But but the pictures, <laughs> Trillium Brewing has been uh, a pretty solid staple of craft beer in uh, massachusetts canton massachusetts um and they are launching a program to uh to partner with the urban farming institute of boston in an effort to better reflect the community at large their their head founder was saying that you know a mission of trillium was to reflect the community that they are a part of and he doesn't feel that the brewery is really living up to that at the moment so um there was a conversation with the the Brewers Association Diversity Ambassador, whose name is Dr. J. Nickel Jackson Beckham, uh, and then they he recommended that they com, uh, partner with a community organization. So uh, they work with the UFI, which is an organization that uh, promotes farming in urban neighborhoods through farmer training, land access, and public education and policy. So they're out of Boston. So basically, this guy, Jackson Beckham, and uh, a bunch of employees and volunteers um, from the UFI got to help brew a 50-barrel batch of Wonderful Complex Individual, which is a stout with sweet potato, Madagascar vanilla, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Sign me the hell up. I told you they brew great beer. Um, yeah, the, the the one photo they have, it's next to a big sweet potato, cinnamon sticks, and like cut up pieces of sweet potato. And I thought, hmm, Yum. this is new. And that here beer was are. released on uh, Friday the 7th. Uh, and basically Trillium is donating $1 from every draft pour and $2 from every four pack to the UFI. The beer is available on draft and in package at Trillium's uh, Canton, Fort Point, and Fenway locations, and it sounds delicious. 
It so looks go delicious. Get it. Oh my Good for them. That's awesome. God, I need a drink. Yeah. I, I I mean, obviously, with the news and notes, every time we do it, it's just it's like that's like the warm up to the drinking. It just it, especially when you read about a beer like that, you're just like, God, like my mouth is watering. I'm just Yeah. I'm thirsty. It's, it sounds delicious. <laughs> um so let's get into it. And as always, we've got a nice little toast. Raise our glass. By your boy, Gabe. Ooh, there it is. Hit me with it. When we drink, we get drunk. When we get drunk, we fall asleep. When we fall asleep, we commit no sin. When we commit no sin, we go to heaven. So let's all get drunk and go to heaven. Amen. Amen. Barmen, as we said last week. Barmen. Alcohol is your ticket into heaven. You heard it here Apparently. first, folks. All right. Let's let's drink. Let's do this. Gabriel Steve Jesse Clemens Apria. No, definitely not. What Jesse Lemons? What'd you say? Clemens. <laughs> Je- you know who he is? God. He's the guy who plays Todd in Breaking Bad. My man, Todd. What are we drinking? What are we starting this we off? We are with? drinking. Well, uh, because you know this, like we said, it's a little bit of a more different episode. We got some interesting, quote unquote, weird things today. Uh, so Stephen and I both have uh, two sours that we are drinking on our own. Uh, would you like to go first or would you like me to go first? Uh, yeah, I'll go first. So uh, we're drinking two beers weird. out of the uh, – so the brewery has um, two different locations, one of which is called their Teru Brewery. Yes, um, that's right. I forgot to mention And that, that is uh, really focused on farmhouse ales, wild ales, sours, different things like that. So – that's what we're going to feature right now, Gabe and I. Mine is called a Wit the Funk. Wit the Funk. It is a take on a classic Belgian wheat beer. Um, so it starts off uh, a wit with orange peel and coriander that's fermented um, with a combination of yeasts, Brettanomyces, and their own house mixed culture. And then it's aged in a combination of American and French oak. Uh, for the souring effect, so it's not kettle soured. It's all all the wild sour flavoring in this. Theoretically, comes directly from the oak aging. It is five point seven percent ABV. Uh, it pours a beautiful, vibrant orange color. It's very, very pretty. Look Let's at see that, it. Let's Gabe. see. Oh yeah, oh, look at yeah. that. It's a little hazy. Uh, I'm drinking out of a uh, tiku stemmed glass, which. Felt appropriate for this. Uh, on the nose, what you get is like the funky tartness first. Um, definitely some orange lemon peel. Maybe some mango. And other citrus and like maybe hmm. a hint of coriander in the background. Sip it down. Oh, that's no, that's that's quite it's quite good. It's refreshing. It's like so the sour hits right away. Um, the first thing I got honestly was mango. Uh, a lot of like like the sweeter citrus side, orange, lemon, and then as it kind of fades into the background, uh, you get like a little bit of hops, but it's not bitter. It's not like a bitter hoppy thing. It's like mm. just some subtle hoppiness. The oak is definitely there. Yeah, I was just about to ask, what is what is the oak doing to it, you think? Because that, I mean, that to me was one of the coolest things, American and French oak. I mean, they do everything. This we'll, we'll get a little more into this a little bit later, but this brewery is all about, like, interesting, different, different things. And so they use, like, all types of barrels and all types of wood. So, so here's the thing. 
The oak gives it the sourness, the tartness. Um, you definitely can taste those sort of darker, earthy flavors in the background. But because it starts off as a Belgian wit, um, you know, this is this is what this brewery is trying to do with both the beer you're about to drink and the one I'm drinking is they're trying to blend styles. So because it starts off right. as a Belgian wheat beer, there's like those sweeter flavors, the banana, the spiciness, the coriander, um, the kind of clove like nutmeg different things like that that you would expect out of like like a blue moon right like that mm. belgian wheatness is blue then, moon with a spin yeah is then put in uh oak barrels and aged and uh so it becomes sour and it's got an earthiness a little bit of hoppiness um in the mouth it is not terribly carbonated um like it's it's nice and medium it's very dry um it's kind of juicy and refreshing uh, and then what leaves your mouth is kind of this lingering tartness, kind of the feeling of having just had some orange juice. It's kind of that, like, just sitting in your mouth afterwards. Fun. Um, I am a fan. Uh, season to drink it in, preferred, and food pairing, if if you can think of one. Mm. Um, for this... I want to have it with like tacos. Nice. And um or like maybe some yeah, like tacos, like uh al pastor tacos or something. Like uh tacos with like some sweetness, some like like f- uh pork that's in, like verde. baking with like oranges and shit in it or something oh right? okay yeah, yeah yeah interesting um and season um la any any la I, season. Ugh, i hate this kid so much uh summer spring summer early fall you know kind of how it felt today like that, that <laughs> i weather. hate you it was freezing in new york today Bro, screw it. Let's move to, like, Minnesota. Let's go somewhere random. Can we go to Montana? Because I don't know anyone who's ever... ever Made it out. (laughs) Ever been to that state. I don't even know where you would fly in if you had to go to Montana. What? You you don't. Name me the biggest city you can think of in Montana. Yes. (laughs) Exactly. I know there's that one, but I can't remember the name of it. Like, their main capital. Montana. Oh, oh, um... Isn't it like something with a B? C. Blooming Ten Fieldville? That I sounds like Indiana. I don't know. That, listen. It probably is. Montana um, is a waste. It's of my turn to drink because I'm getting left out. So I want to jump in. I hope I you don't offend any drinking... listeners in Montana just now. <laughs> what? But, I'm pretty, but I'm pretty sure we didn't offend any listeners in Montana because there's no people there. Go ahead. I didn't say that. He did. So you can yell at him. Uh, the beer I've got, I've also got a sour. Gozes are red. It is a rosé and a goza mix, pretty much. Uh, funky, crisp, and tart goza ale. It's inspired by the soft sweetness of a rosé wine. Um, it's got that rosé color, although it is a little dark, darker than a typical rosé. It's Ooh, it's pretty. It's got the the color scheme of like a grapefruit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It does. Like it's yeah. got. It like looks like juice. a liquid grapefruit. Um, it's another wheat based ale, uh, which begins from some of the qualities you would expect from a goza. Um, coriander spicing, a little bit of light saltiness, uh, and it really complements the tartness of it. Um, it builds in a lot of complexity. Um, again takes time to uh spent in an oak feeder um which um basically is kind of like what steven talked about earlier um it's an oak vessel where beer is basically fermented uh it's got a hint of syrah grapes and i'm going to give it a sniff there are grapes in the beer right did they put there there are indeed okay so they added grapes to it interesting yeah i get it, it smells like fruit punch Ooh. to me nice so I, I i was a little worried about this because i'm not a big sour guy but i am going at it with 110 percent, and let's see what happens 
guzzle it down, take your time, really let it warm over your palate, feel. This is all- weird. I need another step more. Woo! Okay, so, very, very carbonated. It's very, it like stings a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's not bad, though. Um, I definitely get a little bit of the tart. You you get hit with tartness, um, and the saltiness lingers. Like, I I this is the type of drink that like it it like my mouth is already a little bit like oh I need something to drink, so it'll like make you drink it more. Interesting. Um, but I definitely get hit. I get I get hit with a lot of things. Um, I don't. Th- I think there are strawberries in here, but like that was kind of what was on my tongue when I first swallowed the the drink. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very very tart. It's very like this is for all the sour lovers out there. This is like I I would recommend this for you. This is a sour. Um, uh, it's it's definitely got a lot of the berry flavors. Um, it's not too cloudy. It is a little hazy. Um best way to check is to hold i'm drinking it out of a tulip glass you just hold the glass and put your fingers behind it look fun little trick if you can see your fingers then you know not the haziest if you can't you, that's kind of like how you judge it um i'm sure everyone knew that already and i just do saying it to try to sound smart um but we're it's definitely got people things <laughs> a little bit you know you know we're not professors but like we're not not professors but we're you know not I think we're pretty factually not professors. Yeah, I would agree. I think I think just that's just statistical fact. <laughs> yeah. Just by how we sound. We're definitely like, not yeah. professors. So what's interesting is when you said that uh it, in the back end it kind of leaves you with a tart feeling in your mouth and you said that it kind of it makes you want another drink. Which yeah. to me what it sounds like is that you're like a little bit thirsty afterwards, like it's not like thirst quenching. Yeah. And what's interesting about that is um, that it's a goza. Like you're drinking a goza, which I don't think we've had a goza on here before. So this we is have a good not. chance to talk about what is a yes. goza. And a Basically goza... a lovely style of sour beer that originated in Germany. Continue. Mm-hmm. Sorry. And it's, a, it's typically at least 50% malted wheat in the grain profile. But this is the part that I find really interesting. It's usually brewed with salt water or Correct. it's got salt added into the batch. So one of the two, either they'll brew it with like sea water or salt water or something like that, or they'll add the salt to it. But, but either way there's salt in the beer, which makes it, it gives it that tartness, that kind of lime flavor. Um, it makes it a really, it adds a complexity to the flavor profile. It, it adds, uh, different characteristics. It's a, it's a unique taste. I'll give it that. I mean, yeah. it's definitely not your average run of the mill type of ale. But you know, we've you talked will. about we have talked about on the show that you know sour is kind of a broad term for a whole bunch of different styles of beer. Mine is is uh, has Brettanomyces in it and is a wit. Yours is a goza. They're two completely right. different styles of beer. Uh, My one from drink, Belgium, one from Germany. My drink is uh, ABV is five point six percent. Although it, I, it tastes stronger than that, which mm. I guess is cool. Um, what's really fun is Beer Advocate uh, scored both of these pretty high. Goes as a red got an eighty nine, while the with the funk got a ninety, and Untapped as well, uh, pretty similar. Three point nine three for the Goes as a red, three point seven eight for the with the funk i love that name um yeah it's 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 cool it's cool could i drink more of more than one of these in a night for me i'm gonna say no so it's not very sessionable it's sort of a one and done kind of situation well i don't know because there are people out there that like love that like sour is their thing and it's just sour is normally not my thing but with this one specifically I'm finding it's very tart tasting, which is not always my favorite, and it's leaving me very thirsty. Mm, interesting. As opposed to other beers where like, yeah, eventually you'll be thirsty, but it's like it's like the second you swallow it, it's like, crap, I need more. I think that's why I took the second sip at first. Mm. Yeah, I, So, but it is interesting that um, both of our beers are both part of their sour series, and they are both 
hybrids of two different styles of beer. Mine being a hybrid between a, a Belgian wheat beer and a funky sour, and yours being a blend of of uh, in, a take on rosé in the style of a goza. Yes, which which is one of the things that really attracted me to this beer, uh, this sour in the first place. I I just immediately thought, okay, wine, and it's it's made with. Like I said, the Syrah Great. I, I don't know how to say this properly. S Y R A H. Syrah. K Syrah. Syrah. No one should ever hear me sing. I apologize to all the listeners who just I like shut it. off the episode. So the um, brewery, B R U E R Y, <laughs> is a yes. boutique craft brewery located in Orange County. They're about uh, 25-ish miles out of outside of LA. So you know, 30 minutes to two and a half hours, depending on what time of day you're going. Uh, they, they take their name. So they were founded by a guy named Patrick Rue, his last name, R-U-E, hence the name, the brewery, B-R-U-E-R-Y. Get it? See what we did there? Yay! He picked up home brewing as a hobby when he was in law school because he was bored. And then, uh, he won awards for his, his beers. Um, and then he decided not to go to some of his exams. He finished law school. He said, fuck the bar exam. I'm opening a brewery. And that's what he did. And he did it well. Um, and here they are today. And they have nearly half of the beer that they make is aged in wine or spirit barrels um, to get forth, uh, you know, those different flavors. And they really wanted to do something different. They wanted to be, they, they say they pride themselves on imaginative, imaginative beers. I mean, like this stuff, I mean, they want to mix certain things. And if you go on the website, you can see a clear, some of the photos of like him with like, beakers and test tubes testing out and measuring things like they really do their homework here it's crazy yeah. listen to me any okay anyone that's listened to any episode so far they already know how i feel about barrel aging things everyone knows this it's oh, not yeah. it's not a secret i'm sorry it just is what it is i i don't know what to tell you but they have a section on their website where you can click to see all their barrel aged beers they have seven separate tabs I'm going to say that again. They have seven tabs, depending on the style of barrel that the beer is aged in. Bang! Exclamation point! Exactly. They've got bourbon barrel aged, rum barrel aged, new American oak, rye barrel aged, new French oak, tequila barrel tequila aged, and scotch barrel aged. Barrel aged. This I'm- gets me hard. Yeah, I knew he was going to say it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. This but is... No, this shit is insane. Like, look at all this stuff. Like, you can... When you click on it, it literally tells you, like, what the beers are. And they're all, like, super, super dope. They're all different. Like, They've I just, all got... This is the thing. It's, it's I, crazy. I just clicked on the bourbon barrel one. I just clicked on one of the seven tabs. And, like, 50 beers popped up. I don't have time to read all these to you. But... This one's called French Toast something something. This one's called... They've got like... He s- says something something. You know he's excited now. This one's called Mocha Wednesday. That sounds good. Uh, They've got one called the... Ride the Goat. Ride oh, yeah. Goat. Listen. Ride the Goat. I... And not not all barrel aged beers are dark bourbony type beers. The one I'm drinking is is a barrel aged beer. It's and it's a sour. You know what I mean. So there's a they whole have- lot of different things that come with barrel aging. But like, and and of course, plenty of of breweries do barrel aging. But to see, I mean, like if you go on their website, it looks like you're looking at a winery. There's just barrels. They've got a everywhere. scotch barreled, b- scotch barrel aged beer. They've only got one right now, but. I mean, you put anything in Scotch Barrel. I mean, hit me with it. Are you kidding me? And I, I would love it. I, I don't think it says it, but I would love it if it was like smoky, you know, because like that's how I like my Scotch. Like I, I haven't had a lot, but the Scotches I have are like real smoky and like heavy, like dark stuff. And it's like that's that's my jam right there. Like this, this is insane. It's just it, it's it's so cool. I, like um, how and. Okay, so and what's head- cool is most of them are retired, but they still post it on the website, so you can 
if you can get it in the black market, you'll Some be of them able are, to... but but that bourbon barrel section, man, that's like you're going to be scrolling for days. It, it that's what I'm saying. Like when I looked, I when I looked at, it, I thought, Jesus, what don't they have? They have Just... year round beer, seasonal beers, all the barrel aged sour beers, beer by year. I mean, they have a selection. It's going to take you a while. And, and then we okay, think you and should then take the time. In addition to their regular brewery, they have the brewery Teru, which we kind of mentioned. But the, the, the brewery Teru is focused on um, wild beer, fermentation, oak aging, farmhouse ales, different things like that. That's where both of the beers we're, we're drinking are from. Um, they are a separate facility, not far from the main facility. Um, but if you see a beer from the brewery that says the brewery with Teru beneath it, that would be T-E-R-R-E-U-X, uh, that's how you know it's probably in the world, in the world of uh, farmhouse ales, uh, sours, different things like that, like the ones where. Yeah, drinking. what's cool is yeah. they have so they've got the tasting room at the brewery, um, which is in Placentia, California. No, but when I not. first Don't read say it, that. <laughs> I, what do you mean? <laughs> that's the name of it: P L A C E N T I A. Placentia? Pla- it's got it. Placentia, it California. <laughs> Come on. And when I first read it, I read Placenta, and I said, wait a second. Everyone stop. Oh, man. So that's that's located, however you pronounce that name. Um, like Stephen said, the tasting room at the brewery Tarot is in Anaheim, but they also have this cool thing. They've got their own brewery store at Union Market in Washington, D.C., so three different locations where, and I mean, I believe they are trying to expand as much as possible um, because they want to get out of Placentia because they want to really expand. That way they're not only in Placentia because when people ask like, where are you located? They're going to say, oh, we're in Placentia. Uh, we have more to say about this brewery, but we got to drink more beer. Yes, so. please. And this beer we're both drinking, so... Okay, so we're moving on to the Orchata. My palate has been cleansed, and I'm ready for what's to follow. This is a blonde ale brewed with a heavy dosing of rice, cinnamon, and fresh vanilla beans, along with lactose for a little extra creaminess. Um, This is made to replicate horchata, which is a Spanish and Latin American drink that is sweet and milky, uh, and this is a beer made to uh, mimic those flavors. So it's called Orchata, O-R-X-A-T-A. It is 7.2% alcohol by volume, uh, 11.5 IBUs, so not very hoppy. On the SRM chart, we're looking at a 12.5. It is clear. It is amber. It is it's uh, as, it's as blonde as, it, as its name. It's as blonde as the girl sitting next to you. Uh, Beer Advocate uh, gave it another high score, 89. Untapped gave it a 3.91. Um, it's It's got a very slight head. Uh, mine is kind of dissipating a little bit. I've got the classic uh, beer mug going. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely got the sweet and spicy smell to it with a little hint of the vanilla and the cinnamon. Okay, holy shit, there's a lot going on here. Uh, I'm wow, out a there glass. is a lot going on. Um, the smell is... It smells... I, I get punched in the mouth with cinnamon. Mm-hmm. It's spicy. And I'm not mad about it. It's sweet. It's got the vanilla. You can smell... It's like the caramel is in there. Um, banana. It's like a grocery store all in one. Nutmeg. <laughs> There's just like a lot of sweet kind of desserty flavors going on in there. Tell me, tell me. Okay, real quick. Ready? Ready? I'm going to say two words in your head and then I want you to smell it. Ready? Pumpkin pie. Go. Smell it. Come on. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Oh, it's there. Okay. Hey, hey. Okay. Yay! <laughs> it does smell good though. Okay, I'm going in. I'm excited. Yo. Whoa. Yo. Now we're talking. Yes. Pumpkin pie, I'm telling you. Cinnamon toast crunch. Yes. That's what I get off this. 
I'm oh my getting god, pie! I'm getting like apple and, and apple pie, pumpkin pie. I, I'm, apple yeah, pie. I was about to say I'm. I'm also. I'm just getting pie, like pie with cinnamon. Like grandma made a pie, and it's fresh out the oven. And you know, you get a little scoop of vanilla ice cream. You throw that on top, and what do you have for yourself? This you beer. have a meal because it's got the vanilla flavors. It's got the milk in it. It that's that's what the flavor is. If I had to pinpoint this, this would be warm apple pie. You put the vanilla ice cream on it. The vanilla ice cream melted a little bit. You've got a scoop on your fork of apple pie with the crust and the melted vanilla ice cream. You put that in your mouth. That's what I just drank. Yeah, it's very smooth. Um it's it's creamy. It's got the creaminess, but it's not too much. Um it's definitely sweetness like throughout through and through it's a very easy to drink beer i i I would say this this is a dessert beer like i you i wouldn't sit around just crushing this this is like i mean it's it's sweet to the point that like when i get to the end of this pint glass i'll have to double i'll have to check in and decide if i think it's like cloyingly sweet or not like too sweet um and what i I just want to go back to I want to go back to what you mentioned earlier about the uh, first thing you were drinking, though, with the funk when you were talking about the um, uh, you want you would pair it with tacos and with this beer, especially because of the Latin America Mexican roots, so to speak, um, with some of the food pairings, including street tacos, tamales, homemade flan, uh, you know, a mariachi says, fiesta. <laughs> Yes, a mariachi fiesta followed by a siesta. Like <laughs> if this if this beer doesn't want to make you want to get up and dance, I don't know what will cuz I'm already dancing. Like this this is this this I I would absolutely say dessert beer though. 100%. Cuz it's got it it's just is. too sweet for it not to be. It's got a um it's got a medium carbonation. The mouthfeel is is smooth and creamy. Um and it's you know, not you like cinnamon. Yeah, I mean it's you're not getting a lot of hops yeah. out of this. You're not getting anything bitter. This is the polar fucking opposite of what we were just drinking. Like there's no acidity, there's no nothing bright or effervescent about it. It is just like it's a It's made with rice. It's a dessert. Yeah. Yeah, it there's is. There's rice everywhere. There's there's rice in it. We're, we're solid. I got to be honest, I really like it though. Like, remember a few episodes ago, which seems like an eternity ago, when we had the apple crumb cake and we were yeah. like it was nah. weird cuz it was like we wanted it to be like this feels like what I wanted that to be. This is yeah, this is like what we were going what we hoped that taste would come out to and this I mean that was like like half this but trying to be an IPA. This is like Let's just have dessert, man. Like this let's... knows what it is. Yes. Like this this I'm telling you, this just puts you back with grandma making fresh pies. I wouldn't necessarily say like Thanksgiving, but I would definitely say like hey, we're going over to grandma's later. Oh, she made a pie. Like this is this is what we got. This is part of their uh seasonal selections. Um or yeah, part of their seasonal selections, so it's available now. Um, and it was originally released in 2017, um, but they're still making it at this point. Obviously we're drinking it. I promise this was not brewed in 2017. Um, this is a, this is a around the year type of beer. Like, I feel like you can drink this whenever it just has to be like the right night. Yeah. I mean, don't drink this like on the beach i i was just gonna say do not drink this on the beach it'll make you feel See, like you're eating dessert it. and won't make you feel sexy because that's what beaches are for just uh, sex appeal yeah why <laughs> i don't understand um so the brewery <laughs> the brewery clearly prides itself on imaginative beers that if we haven't made that clear by now that is what they do that's what their mission is um they are really spe- they they're they're out to specialize in barrel aged and experimental ales to try fun interesting things um they were founded as a small friend and family run business and they continue true to that mission to this day this beer is a great example of that they also have several things i wanted to to bring up if you're a person who 
has some extra cash lying around and wants to get involved in a club. Yeah, yeah, hit him with this. This is awesome. They have uh, their Preservation Society, which is a quarterly beer club um, for those with a taste for discovery. And what you get for that is uh, it's $70 per quarter. And uh, you can either have shipping um, to California or Nevada, or you can pick up in California or D.C., and you get four 750 milliliter bottles per month, uh, plus exclusive member benefits in the tap room and at Offshoot Beer Company, which is um, they're affiliated with. This uh, is for like the VIPs of beer, like the, yes. the the people that they need to get the product first. They they want to sample it. The I, I would assume you know beer reviewers. I would love that job are the ones who sign up for this sort of deal and get first in line and you get all this great stuff and you get to try the beer before anyone else does. So you basically get four beers a quarter. So you get four beers every three months. Uh, You also get uh, to save 10% online and in their tasting room, you get access to exclusive member only bottles, member only tap lists, and 10% on releases from Offshoot Beer Company. This quarter's beers include the Mash and Vanilla 2019, which is an ode to a classic from the brewery, a bourbon barrel aged barley wine style base, uh, and then adding a, a vanilla beans um, and different stuff. They have one called the Muffin Stuffin'. They have one called the Hoppy Horsey, and one called the Horse in the Orchard. That's just this month's offerings. Um, I, so, I mean, I I would love to be the guy that comes up with the name. I, I know he's he's crushing Muffin it. Stuffin'. Good for the, you. That job opening that. will not be open anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, and then if you have even more cash to burn, they also have the Reserve Society, which is soups exclusive. Uh, membership is already closed for the year, but you can be one of the first to get on the email list, uh, to enroll for 2021. Uh, and how that works, it's, uh, it's $300 per year. You pick your choice of basically which brewery you're interested in. So it could be the brewery, which is barrel aged beers, the brewery Teru, which is tart and sour beers, or the horchata would definitely be on my list if i did this i would have to say you would not do the taru because you don't like sours and i'd be but i like this give me all the shit um benefits include i i can't even read all this to you but 15 included bottles uh depending on your beer preference 15 percent off online Priority access to any ticketed event, access to over 100 total beers for 2020, society experiences. There's so many things here. And quite honestly, the people from the brewery will come to your house and clean it for free. If we're being real about it, our listeners probably don't have this kind of cash to burn. If you do, give the, it to they, us. They give the you, they'll give you a dog of your choice to raise. Um, they'll, uh, <laughs> they'll, they'll file your taxes for free. It's here's, it's a really great value. Here's some of the tentative beers that they're that are on the calendar to be released this year. If you were a member this year, which you can't be because you're already too late. For January, they got a Black Tuesday aged in additional year in wine barrels. In February, they get a white chocolate ras- white chocolate raspberry. Happy Valentine's Ooh. Day. March, they get a Black Tuesday Reserve aged for two years in bourbon barrels. Bourbon barrels, come on. April, they got a Belgian-style quad aged in a signature barrel. They got a soy, which is their anniversary barrel-aged Solera blend and other things. May, we're not going to talk about because I'm allergic to that. June, uh, you asked for it. Bourbon wow. barrel aged imperial stout with vanilla. And it goes on and on. So, like, the point is, if you have cash to burn, they got fun stuff going on, uh, and you can join their um, exclusive societies. And uh, This is really cool because I feel like we don't see this a lot of exclusive the vip club type deals where you sign up and you get all these free you know not free but you get all these uh really cool you this know a, yeah this is a really cool way to offer exclusive beer you know for a brewery like this that's out here making crazy concoctions like literally you know just the mad science of beer um if you're somebody what's really cool is they and even at the uh, brewery itself, um, they've got a couple uh, great I- uh, items that are just on draft that you can only get at the location. Uh, they got the Beer Barra, which is an earthy beer uh, made with spices and flavors. They've got a Humulus Wet, which is basically a quote-unquote wet 
hopped, super hopped ale uh, made with plump, ripe, and wet, wet hop cones. And then they've got a locale red, which is an oak-aged American red ale, which, oh my god, that would be a choice of mine. Citrus and floral notes, notes of toffee, orange peel, crushed herbs, vanilla, oak, uh, a beer that is intricate yet unassuming. So they've got some really great selections at the place itself. Go check it out. They also have a bakery series out right now that you can get your hands on. Um, we wanted to do, Stephen wanted to do, instead Gabe of the sours that Gabe didn't well. like, we were going to feature, just have a dessert we section didn't where have I would have, options. I was going to drink the I, cherry pie and Gabe was going to drink the banana bread, but Gabe refused. I, Gabe, I defend saw yourself. the Gozes are red and I figured I, I wanted to step out of my comfort zone and I wanted to try something new. Stop beer shaming me or i will come to la and kick your ass if that's what it takes to get you to visit me i already listen (laughs) i'm coming back soon i just don't know when uh yeah so this brewery has a lot to offer you can visit them uh on the west coast or on the east coast in dc uh they are dope this beer we're drinking is insane and by the way Mm. it hides the alcohol really well because it does not taste like 7.1 and i'm starting to feel a little buzz and i'm like oh yeah it's a fucking yeah 100 alcohol 100 it's got that i'm trying to pinpoint what it is there's this creamy flavor that's hitting the back of my throat every time i take a sip like as it's finishing going down it's, it's just got that creaminess that lingers which i love it it's 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 like it's got that like it, it's not spicy in the sense of like hot, but it's got that spiciness in the sense of like flavor. It's the almost cloves, you know what I'm talking cl- about. It's that clove, nutmeg, cinnamon that yeah, kind of that that world. hits the back of your throat as it goes down, and it makes it even better. Like every yeah. time I take a sip, I I get that. Uh, I think we have to hit the road, but before we do, before we do, Stephen, do you like some, chocolate? I have some things to talk about. So, wine enthusiasts, typically not focused on beer, but they did a completely serious guide to pairing craft beer with the Whitman Sampler, which is a sampler of chocolates, uh, an array of bite-sized chocolates filled with nougat, cream, fruit, or nuts. So, they basically... Stuff you um, can't eat. We get it. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't going to talk about it. Um, I was. I think it's hilarious. So Whitman's brand was created in 1842 in Philadelphia, and they they have a sampler of chocolates, and and I you know I assume that wine enthusiast does a pairing for wine. I don't know um, that because it doesn't matter to this podcast, but the craft beer one does. And basically, what they were doing is trying to pair chocolate. Like, of course, you could pair chocolate with beer in terms like there's so many beers that have chocolate in them right there's beer with chocolate notes different things like that but what i thought was interesting was um instead of pairing beer flavors like basically instead of pairing beers with flavors that are already in the chocolate like raspberry or orange peel the real fun comes out of like basically finding flavors that complement each other so like weird things that you wouldn't think would go together but that actually really do um so I'm just going to throw out some chocolates, and I'm going to give you a hint. Basically, okay, so so wine enthusiast picked beers that pair well with every chocolate. So I'm going to tell you what the chocolate is, and I'm going to give you a hint as to what beer they kind of picked, and I'm going to see what you throw out. Okay. And then I'll tell you what, what they actually like, paired it with. Okay, but I want to make sure I play the game right. Like, you want a specific beer, or you want a specific style of beer? I want a specific beer. Okay, so the first one, the chocolate was a coconut cream. Coconut cream chocolate. Co- Get that in your mind? Coconut cream chocolate. Okay. Now, the beer they picked was from Dogfish Head. So I want you to think through the Dogfish Head beers that you know. Okay. And tell me what you think would pair well with the coconut <laughs> cream. I already think I know what you're going to guess. They have a chocolate beer, don't they? I don't know. I'll give you another hand. It's not that. Okay. 90 minute IPA. Not what I thought you'd guess. Really? 90 minute IPA with, with coconut cream? 
I thought well, you'd say the pumpkin. You make it seem like they pick weird shit, so I'm just going for the gold here. <laughs> they went with the sequench. Uh, they said that, uh, you know, the sequench is their sour, brewed with limes uh, and... That's why I don't know it. It's a goza, um, and it highlights the tropical coconut flavor to create the experience of a pina colada. Interesting, right? Okay, moving on. So, so using the chocolate to make a pina colada, like the chocolate makes the beer taste like a pina colada. That's what they did. Okay, this one's interesting, and we're just gonna we're just gonna ignore. The, I oh, it's I got nuts in it. I can't get through this article without talking about. This oh article. my Don't god, worry. suck it up! All right, <laughs> <laughs> the chocolate is chocolate covered peanuts. Your favorite? Got it. Yeah, okay. fuck you. But get that in your mind. Okay. Pick a beer, and the hint I'm going to give you is, it's it's one of the big like it's not craft beer. It's like a, it's big beer, big commercial. Doesn't have to be American, uh, okay. but big beer. Chocolate covered peanuts. Um, think big beer. Can get it anywhere. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. New Belgian fat tire. Guinness Irish Stout. Okay, uh, I mean that's not too surprising to me. The only thing I would say to that is like I feel like you can't pair a lot of food related things with Guinness just because it's so heavy already. But I mean that's not like too surprising to me. The dark chocolate that covers the peanuts are boosted by the stout's coffee and chocolate notes. Neither are actually ingredients of Guinness, but the creamy mouthfeel from the nitro pour is a nice contrast to the con- crunchiness of the candy. Oh, there's there's so many fun ones in here. Damn it, I want some do... chocolate now, Steven. Just Damn one it. more. So the, the chocolate is a chocolate whip. Do you know nice. what that is? Okay. Like mousse? Um, yes, I think. <laughs> yeah, okay. that sounds right. The chocolate is a chocolate whip. The drink is a craft beer from Vermont. That oh, compliments geez. that Come compliments on. the the chocolate whip. You know how many Vermont makes some of the best beer. Like, I know. Just think, think uh, about think about what's been in your life lately. Uh, chocolate mousse, Vermont beer. Oh, something maple related, something maple ish related. Um. Did we did we mention this beer on a past episode? Well, Maybe. no, we haven't done Vermont. No, we haven't. Oh. No. You're on the right track though. Um they brew sip. Oh, uh, I got it the other day, the maple nipple. Bang! Exclamation point. He got it. I got it. I actually I bought it for myself because I was I was like we should do Lawson's and you know he couldn't get it out there so I figured all right screw it I'm still gonna drink this and bring it home. It this was beer, great. This beer is smooth and brewed with 100 percent Vermont maple syrup, which offers an earthy sweet flavor that builds with each sip. The ale's roasted caramel flavors and light berry notes make it a wonderful pairing to this creamy chocolate piece. Who are these wine enthusiasts? That's, and what do they look like? It's Wine Enthusiast Magazine. They've got listen. This goes on and on. I mean, I we can't play this game all night. I would if I could. Uh, but they paired a maple nut butter chocolate with the Sierra nice. Nevada Bigfoot barley wine. Okay, um, right. that sounds sexual. And yeah, it's it's worth checking out. It's it's a fascinating little. Like, how credible are they? Like, do they know what they're oh, talking about? Yes, or is... yes. Okay. It's Wine Enthusiast okay. Magazine. They're like one of the most credible like wine resources out there um but i just love that they did this because you know you think of pairing beer of course people pair wine with food and pairing wine with chocolate is a perfect kind of valentine's day theme yeah that's that's yeah but you don't really think of pairing beer with food as much although we do do it but you never think of pairing beer with chocolate so now somebody did yeah, I feel like lately everything I've been seeing has been like cheese, which yeah. signed me up. But yeah, no, beer uh beer with chocolate is definitely a way to go. So thank you, wine enthusiasts. Thank you guys. Um so we need to And get, with that we need to roll. Happy birthday, Dad. I hope you're listening. 
Happy birthday, Dad. Happy five-year anniversary to Well Work. Happy past Valentine's Day. If you didn't have anyone to love, just know you're not alone because Valentine's Day is just another day. It's just February 14th, and Cupid is a little bitch so we're all gonna be better for amen and on that happy note i have a few things to knock out of the way real quick um first of all if anybody is listening to this in the california area we've previously mentioned this but i'm in a production of othello it opens on uh at university of southern california uh next thursday the 27th uh and so if you are in the area come check it out it's an excellent show directed by Kate Burton, um, and we really want people to see it. And uh, the Hope USC lines. MFAs are doing their shit, so come out and support. Uh, and podcast-related, uh, if you haven't already, please rate and review the show uh, on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the HO Podcast. We are on Facebook, we are on YouTube, and going back to acting-related things, I'm going to be on Broadway! Not really. I just <laughs> want to say something acting-related because I felt left out. Send us Follow your us drink on... suggestions. Uh, Vermont, yes. we hear you. We will do it. Uh, tequila, we got you, Vermont. Don't you worry. Tequila has also been requested. Got it. We'll do it eventually. We got... G, G listen... We're doing tequila. Don't worry. We're doing tequila. We're going to do a whiskey episode. I vote a scotch episode. We'll, we'll we'll get to it eventually. Don't you worry. Please, as we said earlier, rate, review, subscribe, five stars or nothing. Follow us. Let us know what you want to drink and raise a glass because you all deserve it. And go check out the brewery if you're in California or D.C. or if you find their stuff abroad. It is worth uh, giving a drink to. Uh, let's get out of here, Gabe. Let's let's leave. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, we will see you next week. Every Thursday, dropping drop new episodes. We'll see you guys. Cheers. Adios. Adios.